Check out this matchup. Not a lot of us predicted this, guys. Predators and Blues in St. Louis, 8 o'clock Eastern on CBC. And I can tell you, they knocked off the top two seeds in the West. Uh, Nashville, very impressive. That top line, amazing. So Blues head coach Mike Yo knows he's going to have to keep an eye on them. Obviously, that top line, and you see you see skill, you see speed, and you see some uh, some some um, hard competitiveness to them. So they can break you down one on one, and and obviously they've got a lot of hockey sense. So it's a good task, it's a good challenge. Mike Yo's gonna have his hands full because this is maybe the hottest line right now in the league. The uh, Jofa line, Johansson, Forsberg, Arvidsson, they combined for five goals, 15 points, plus 22. <laughs> And uh, you know what? At times this year, that line was invisible, especially Forsberg got off to a horrible start. But right now, he's a yeah. deadly weapon. Why so? Maybe the best release in the, the entire National Hockey League. So Jake Allen is going to somehow have to try and figure out this release. I've talked to a lot of goaltenders, and they tell me it's the funkiest release. He, he has different release methods. So sometimes the uh, puck is in his feet a little bit closer. Sometimes a blade is more open than other, which would normally suggest a high shot. But for whatever reason, however, he's able to be deceptive with that release. That is something that it's going to be very difficult. Pekka Rene, his goaltender, whom of course practices against him every day, said he's still having a hard time trying to figure out what he does with that release that makes it so dangerous. You know, in the, in the Minnesota series, everybody looked at the Blues defense and now they understood why Kevin Shattenkirk was expendable. Mm. Here is this group of guys, particularly Pareko, Bowmeister, Edmondson, and Petrangelo. Bortuzzo and Gunnarsson play 11, 12 minutes a game. The others are in the 25 minute mark. This team is huge on the blue line. They have great reaches. They're not afraid to go to the offensive side of the puck as well, but the ability to put their stick in the right place, use the body at the right time, is absolutely remarkable. Petrangelo may be the, one of the most unheralded superstar defensemen in the National Hockey League. They are going to be tough. They're going to be tough on the Jofa line for one thing. And by the way, this is one of the great secret rivalries in the National Hockey League. These two towns are only five hours apart by car, and they absolutely hate each other. And it's shocking because it's the first time ever they're meeting in the postseason, so there's something at stake here. Uh, by the way, you mentioned how good St. Louis's blue line is. Right, listen, they allowed eight goals uh, in the first round. Nashville only allowed three goals in the first round of the <laughs> Chicago Blackhawks. Is this going to be one of those series first goal wins? Uh, I hope not because we like goal scoring in the National Hockey League. But I tell you what, if there was only one one games or one nothing games, I don't think anybody would be surprised. Yeah, and, and listen, we talked about how great that Blues blue line is. When you look at Roman, Yossi, PK, etc., they've got a lot of yes. talent on that blue line. And they love to join the rush, too. So this is uh, these are two teams uh, that can really generate a lot of offense, and they're both very mean. That's the one thing about Nashville that people maybe overlooked in the Chicago series. There's a meanness there that, that maybe they didn't have at parts in the regular season. And I'm glad you mentioned the offensive side of the blue line because Nashville, 181 points from their blue line this season, tied San Jose for the most in the league. They get those guys up on the rush. You know what? PK's in the right spot on this team. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there was so much expectation in Montreal, and guy, we're hearing about it already about PK <laughs> in Montreal. But he's playing in the right spot. He's a 3-4 defenseman doing the right things, gets to play on the power play, and can be a difference maker in this series. All right, so some great defenders, but also some sensational goaltenders, at least the hottest two goalies in Pekka Did Kelly Rene. tell you that, too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These numbers tell me that, Johnny. Look at this. I mean, Pekka Rene, honestly, a 0 0.7 goals against 976. That's pretty darn good. Jake Allen, though, that's the great story. Remember, earlier in the year, he had to get his head straight. Yes. I think he's uh, mentally strong right now, Kel. Well, there's no question about it. Marty Brodeur coming in and helping him just with the mental aspect the preparation and to me the positioning that's he doesn't really work on the technique that's not his forte what he's done with Allen though is sort of calmed him down he was a very nervous goaltender earlier in the year you know he's 26 years old he's not the smoothest goaltender I've ever seen you know technique wise uh, not maybe as polished as some other guys but still there's a fierce sense of battle that when you watch him he's willing to participate in the the battles with his teammates and you know what say what you want about Pecorini this this guy did not have a great regular season. Not at all. Yeah. That was one of the reasons in my yeah. mind why Nashville was a difference maker. The fact that this guy is doing what he does now probably puts to light how good this team is. Kelly and I were in Nashville in the middle of March and he was starting to get his form back and that to me is a big part of why they are where they are right now. Yeah, 126 shots, 123 saves. I mean, you, you and give your team a pretty good to team too, right? I mean, if you think the Hawks Chicago, are okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the yeah. two top teams for Chicago, extremely dangerous. All right, uh, we talked about the goaltending, we talked about uh, the Jofa line, but there could be an X factor for St. Louis as well, right, John? There could be. Paul Stastny played 
for the first time in the playoffs after breaking, breaking his foot in the middle of March in Game 5. He played more than 22 minutes after not playing in that period of time. That was pretty impressive. He scored a goal. And by the way, he works with Vladdy Tarasenko. And I fully suspect that Tarasenko, who only had one goal in the whole series against Minnesota, will be much better when Paul Stastny is his centerman. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup again. That's 8 o'clock Eastern, 7.30 with Ron McLean and the guys getting set for puck drop on CBC.